Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Marty Griffin, and you are listening to the Golf Strategy School podcast. It's the only podcast that's really designed to help golfers get over that milestone score of breaking 90 or breaking 100 if you're still working on it. Uh, We had a really cool question come through our free Golf 101 How to Break 90 Facebook group the other day. It's a question that I've heard kind of versions and variations of before in the past as well. So I think that is the subject for today's podcast episode. And that is what does practice look like for your single digit handicapper who shoots in the seventies? So that's me. Um, I could give you an idea of what an individual practice looks like, but I think seeing what a week of practice is a little bit more representative of the process that I go through. So That's our subject, a week of practice through the eyes of a single digit handicapper. Let's talk about it. All right. So when it comes to practice, like I said, I wanted to go over a week of time rather than just a single practice session because any one practice session could be focused on fixing a problem. But I think how I go about preparing for a week of golf is a pretty good indicator and a pretty good pattern or template, if you want to call it that, for what you can do to prepare for golf as well. Now, I, I've said this a thousand times before. I don't have a ton of time to practice. Honestly, I can probably squeak out two practice sessions before I play, and then I am going to get to the course around an hour ahead of time So I can get a good practice session in the day that I play. And that practice session is going to be a lot more of acclimation towards conditions and things like that. So I am prepared for what that individual specific course is going to give me. Now, when we break down these sessions, I honestly, for me, I'm, I'm practicing at home. I, I really find based off of my own statistical kind of fact finding that I've done And I honestly believe this is the case for most people, but when your short game is on, that's when I play the best. That's when I believe you probably play the best as well. You can hit a great driver all day long, but if you're not converting on and around the green where the majority of our shots happen, then we're probably not going to be scoring as well as we could. So my practice is largely focused around short game and putting and then that day of is where I'm working a little bit more full swing. So at home, I've got a five gallon bucket that, well, in the winter, I use it to scoop ash into uh, from my fireplace and then, you know, it goes in the garden. But during the summer, it's a practice tool for me. And what I'll do is I'll do a chipping ladder. Now, y'all know I love my ladder drills because they make practice progressively harder. And this is a way that we can kind of experience a practice that is more difficult than what we're going to encounter on the course. So what I do is I do a chipping ladder that starts at 10 feet and I'll go out to 50 or 60 or 70 feet, depending on how much time I have. And I'll do that in 10 foot intervals. So here's what it looks like. You take your five gallon bucket, you lay it on its side and you move 10 feet away from it and you try and chip that ball into the bucket. Now I do rotations of 10 at 10 foot intervals. So 10 tens, I'll do 10 shots from 10 feet. I'll probably get a good 60 or 70% of those into the bucket. Then I'm going to back up to 20 feet and I'm going to do the same thing. And once I get to 20 feet, yes, I still want to make the shot. But for me, the goal is more of really, really being focused and hitting my landing spot. Because at 10 feet, I'm, I'm trying to land it in the bucket on the fly. But at 20 feet, I'm probably one hopping it into the bucket. So my focus isn't so much, hey, did it go in the bucket? But hey, did it land where I wanted it to land? Because I think something that, especially golfers who are struggling with breaking 90, something that those golfers are really struggling with is separating the hole from their target. A lot of golfers who are newer to the game, they they kind of get stuck in this mental process of having to fly the golf ball to the hole 
for it to be a good shot. And then you're almost always long, which being long isn't necessarily a bad thing, but you can be significantly long and that's going to cause you some issues. So really getting focused on picking a spot in front of you and trying to land the ball on that spot is going to do you a great service out on the golf course. Cause then when you're, you know, maybe only 20 feet away from the cup and you're, you know, let's say you're five feet off the green and 15 feet onto it, you know that you've got a really solid process to go through. You feel comfortable about hitting your target and then letting it release to the cup. So I'm going to do that from 20 feet on backwards. I'm really more focused on hitting that spot that I want the ball to land. And then hopefully the ball stops within five or 10 feet of that bucket. So it would be a putt that I have at least a chance of making. So I'll, I'll work my way back that way. Really what we're doing here is again, we're practicing in a way that is going to make it more difficult than the game itself. When I do my second practice, my at home practice, this is going to be my, uh, my putting practice. And for me, you know, especially if you listen back to the Brandon Stukesbury episode, Brandon talked about like the three fundamentals of putting being speed, your ability to start the ball on the line that you want, and then um, read. So for me, I feel pretty good my ability to control speed and to read the putts. Uh, speed control happens in my day of practice at the golf course. But my ability to really start the ball on the line that I want is what I really try to focus on. And for me, I do that in the form of a gate drill. Now, a gate drill, simply put for me, the way that I set it up is I set up about a six foot putt and then I create a gate that is maybe a golf ball and a half wide that I have to roll the ball through in order for it to go in the cup. Now, my main goal, my primary goal is to roll the ball through the gate. That gate is three feet away from me and three feet away from the cup. Uh, so first goal, get the ball through the gate. Second goal, make the putt. Now, if you continue to do this gate drill, you can switch up your distances. I would always really try and focus on getting that gate about three feet away from you because if you can control the line for the first three feet of the putt, you're going to have a lot better chance of getting that putt to do what you want i.e. go in the hole for the rest of the length of that putt. Now, another way that you could do this is you could do the old meter stick drill. And that's where you, you, know, you take your meter stick, you balance a golf ball on one end of it, and you putt the ball and roll it the length of the meter stick on the meter stick the whole time. And then it trails off after that. The idea here, again, is that you're controlling that first three feet or so of that putt. So you are like in very, very solid control of the line that putt starts on. Uh, for me, I'll occasionally I'll have my kids build me like a Lego bridge and that serves as my gate because, hey, let's involve the family. But that practice session is probably in the 20 minute range. Uh, the first practice that I mentioned is probably 30 to 40, 45 minutes and again, it's just in my yard. Um, I know that normally the day that I'm playing golf is Thursday. So I'll set up my practices as Monday and Wednesday. That way, when I go and I play, I'm still pretty fresh on those practices. So then when I go to play golf on Thursdays, I'm going to get there about an hour ahead of time. And I'm going to break up my practices into a couple different segments. So I'm starting off first with just a warm up. I'll go and I'll buy a large bag of balls, which is I think in like the 50 or 60 golf ball range at my home course. So I'll go out there, I'll buy a bag of balls and I'll take maybe 10 minutes just to warm up. And it's purely, you know, just getting, getting the blood moving, getting the physicality going and all I'm really focused on, I work kind of wedged through middle irons when I'm warming up. All I'm really focusing on feeling is feeling that golf ball hit the middle of my club face. I'm just really looking for solid contact. I don't care shot shape or anything. This is 
purely an exercise in stretching. Once I'm warmed up, I am going to get some very target specific swings in. What does that mean? Well, for me, I'll start with my pitching wedge. I'll pick a target and it's going to be one shot, one swing, one club, one target. And then that target changes, the club changes, the shot changes, the swing changes. So we are, you know, just moving through our bag. The way that I like to do it, just to kind of throw up a little bit of variability in it, is I'll go pitching wedge, eight iron, six iron, four iron, three wood. And I'll hit one shot to one target with all of those. So I'm going through my entire pre-shot routine, practicing as if I'm hitting shots out on the course. So I, I go all the way up to the three wood. And then when I get to that three wood and I hit that shot, I switch and I go driver. Then for me, I have a hybrid, a four hybrid, not a five wood. So I'll go driver, hybrid, five iron, seven iron, nine iron, and then gap wedge. So I'll do that up and then down the bag once just to kind of get myself more into the mental headspace of shot making rather than swinging and swing thoughts and technicalities and stuff like that. So that's what I do when I'm uh, going through my shot specific stuff. Now this is probably a good 15 minutes of my practice. So I'm at this point, I'm probably at about 25 minutes of my hour warm up, And my goal is to have yeah, 55, 60% of my time be practice around the green warming up and the rest of that time being on the range warming up. So that really eats just about all of my range time. When it comes to green time, I start off again with chipping ladder. <laughs> I'll do greenside chips and uh, same process. I'll, I'll work my way from my wedges through probably my seven iron because my seven iron is my least lofted club that I will ever chip with. I don't really chip with a six iron or a five iron, but if you do, if that's part of your normal process, please make sure you include that in your practice. So for me, because I don't, I don't go that high up into my bag. I'll start at, boy, I sound like I was from Wisconsin there. My bag. <laughs> So I will start in my bag with my pitching wedge and I will do one shot. I'll, I'll either have a club cause it's my pitching wedge. It's, it's got a fair amount of loft to it. So I know I'm going to carry it a fair distance. Uh, I'm going to have either like T's marking a line that's roughly halfway between me and my target, or I might even lay down a club if I know I'm working on longer shots where the ball is going to be in the air a little bit more. But for the most part, we're getting the ball on the ground as quick as possible. Uh, I just like to have it for a visual reference so I can, again, be very focused on my landing zones. Uh, so what I might do is I might have kind of like a runway where I'm looking at rolling the ball through and I will have a, a set of tees on either edge of that runway or fairway, if you want to think of it that way. Um, and I'm just going to kind of pick that halfway point just so I have a visual reference and I can get really hyper-focused on that, that exact spot where the ball is going to land. Now it's not always halfway, please don't interpret that, but sometimes it is halfway. Sometimes it's before that. And this allows me to be a little bit more focused on exactly how far I'm carrying the ball on these greenside chips. So I start with my pitching wedge. Then I go up to my nine iron. Then I go down to my gap wedge, then up to my eight iron, down to my sand wedge, up to my seven, down to my lob. That's how I work my way through the clubs that I would chip with. And that's how I get my green side practice going. I'll do my chipping ladder that way. Now, if you wanna take it to the next level and you wanna pick some distances to fly the ball, you can get really, really creative with this. And this is one of the practices that I lay out in detail in the Golf Strategy Academy. And if you can get through this one, holy smokes, is your short game sharp. But what you wanna do is, you know, let's say you have, you're just off the green, max of like five feet, honestly, probably two or three feet off the green. And you've got 15 to 20 feet between you and the cup. 
you're going to put some tees on the edge of your fairway. Or if you talk to your greens keeper, if you can put a chalk line on the green, or maybe you lay down a club to make it a very, you know, hard and fast line, you are going to practice hitting a shot over that club. That's halfway between you and the cup. And then you're going to stop that shot within five feet of the cup. Do that through your, through your clubs that you would chip with. Obviously, if you're getting up towards your bump and run clubs, your eight, your seven, if you chip with a six or a five, it's going to be pretty much impossible to do with those. And that's okay. But what you want to get used to is alternating the distances that you carry and still getting the result that you want. So with your shorter clubs, you can do some where you carry over that halfway point and then stop it around the cup. Or you can get rid of that halfway point. You can have it just be something visual with like the outside boundaries. And then you can land the ball before that halfway point and let it run out. Now, if you're doing that, obviously we're doing that with all of our clubs all the way up through that seven iron or six iron or five iron, however high up you use for your bump and run chips. So that's how I, how I practice kind of with my chipping ladder. It's very similar to the eliminator drill that I've talked about in the past. Now for my putting practice, y'all know what I'm going to say. Six foot putting ladder. It's the last one that I do before I go out and I play. So I've, I've done these green side chips probably for about 15 minutes. So at this point, I'm probably at about 40 minutes total of practice. Uh, Again, depending on how much time I have, I might jump straight to that putting ladder. Otherwise, if I have a fair amount of time left, I'm going to reserve probably at least eight to 10 minutes for that putting ladder. But if I got a little extra time, I'll do like a hurricane putting drill. So I will take eight golf balls and kind of, you know, how a hurricane symbol on the weather channel is that stretching spiral. I'm going to put a ball at three feet, four feet, five feet and six feet getting further away. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side with those golf balls at three, four, five, and six feet. And I'm just going to practice first at that, starting at that three foot zone, stretching it out to six, coming back to that three foot zone, stretching out to six, going the other way. So it's just a a way to get real specific on my shorter putts. And again, For me, because I know that what I struggle with is starting the putts on the line that I want, this is a way for me to really, really practice that process again. And it mirrors what I've been working on at home, but it's a way for me to practice that process and make sure that I am starting the ball on the path I want. And then, like I said, I'm going to save a good eight to 10 minutes for that six foot putting ladder. And if you struggle with the six foot putting ladder, cut the distance in half, do three foot intervals. So you're looking at three, six, nine, 12, 18, uh, or 15 feet to get your, you know, you're putting a little bit more in tune. Now I probably would go out to 18 or maybe even 21 feet with a three foot putting ladder, just because you still have a chance at making an 18 foot putt not so much in the 20 foot range, statistically speaking, but in that kind of 15, 18 foot zone, there is still a slight chance that that puck could go in. And so I'm, I'm probably going to practice that just a little bit more uh, rather than cutting it off hard at 15 feet. So that is my process. Now, again, this is for me personally, because I know where my weaknesses are. I know the best rounds of golf I've played are when my short game is on fire. I had my best putting day in probably 10 years last year, and I was able to go four under just on the front nine. So that's why I practice this way, because I know when that skill is sharpest, I am playing my best. I don't normally cost myself strokes with my driver or with my irons. It is around the green and For most people, the majority of our shots come around the green. So if we can practice more around the green, we're going to be better off in terms of our total score. Now, if you have found this helpful, I would certainly appreciate it if you subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you are notified 
and the notification bell <laughs> anytime I release a new video. If you're listening on the podcast, hey, you've probably already subscribed. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. But maybe you can tell a friend, a golfing buddy about this podcast because, you know, we're trying to grow the listenership. And just to kind of give some results of our big master's giveaway, our winner was Eric Bree, or it might be Bray, but I'm from Wisconsin and Bree is a cheese. So I instantly think Bree. Uh, Eric lives down in North Carolina, so he was the winner of five of my favorite golf books, as well as a 2019 Masters flag, and he is a new member into the Golf Strategy Academy. If you would like to join Eric in the Golf Strategy Academy, I've got two sections in there, one that speaks specifically towards Breaking 90, focuses more on swing fundamentals, and another that focuses on how we practice, and that's more about Breaking 80. So if you find yourself in one of those two buckets of people, I can absolutely help you. The breaking 90 section again, focuses more on the, the fundamentals on how to fix a slice. Cause let's be honest, that's where the majority of golfers who are struggling to break 90, find themselves slicing the ball and struggling with consistency of contact. So that's what I really lean into in my swing fundamentals area. The practice side of the coin really teaches you how to play under pressure because that is the skill that you need if you're going to break 80. So congratulations again to Eric. Make sure that you're subscribed to this channel so you can get all of this information as soon as possible. And the next time we do a contest or maybe like a group training session, you can be a part of it. Until next time, everybody, I will catch you in the short grass. Cheers. Yeah.